but apparently went on for months until the teenager's parents found out. Eyewitness News reporter Jamie Roth is in Hempstead, where the suspect was in court today. Jamie. Liz, 23-year-old Caitlin Grant arrested this morning, arraigned here in Hempstead this afternoon. Her parents bailed her out. Her father, Maurice, is, is the assistant principal at the same school where Caitlin Substitute taught and met the alleged victim. Police say Caitlin Grant, a Freeport High School substitute math and science teacher, met a 15-year-old girl at school and the two began a sexual relationship that lasted four months. The girl's family found out about it and called police yesterday. Today, Grant was arrested and arraigned. The Freeport School Superintendent says she had no prior criminal record and passed all background checks. Now, she'll no longer work in the school district. Her Today, attorney says Raymond, she's innocent. You heard in court, she emphatically denied the allegations, and we stand by that right now until we've had an opportunity to investigate the case. Grant is charged with criminal sexual act in the third degree. That's a felony. She's also charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Uh, coming up tonight at 6, what the judge said to her before setting bail. Reporting live from Hempstead, Jamie Roth, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Let's move on to uh, teacher sex scandals. Jenks sent me the story. I, there's really, I feel like we've done a billion the of these story, stories, yeah. which is why I avoid them. But Jenks sent it to me, so I'll do it. Um, Erica DiPaolo was uh, voted the Essex County, New Jersey Teacher of the Year in 2011. However, recently she was charged uh, in a huge scandal. Uh, we have a video that explains more. Let's take a look. This is the video Erica DiPaolo made after winning Essex County Teacher of the Year in 2011. I don't have any children, and I always say I don't have children to go home and, and take care of, but every morning and every day that I go to school, I have 110 children that, you know, are very near and dear to my heart. Students like Arnold Jondo couldn't believe the news that DePaulo was arrested for having a sexual relationship with one of her students. I was kind of shocked. Uh, I, was, I was a little surprised. She was really close with the students. We all liked her. Yeah, it says also he continues to say she was always there after school if you ever needed any help. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know what to say about this story. We've done it so many times. I, it's, I don't know if it's an epidemic or if it's something that's been happening for a while, but no one really spoke out against it. Mm -hmm. She's 33 years old. She was allegedly having sex with a 15-year-old student. No one saw it coming, but it turns out that it happened or it could have happened. I don't know. I, it makes me depressed because you're an attractive 33-year-old woman. I'm sure plenty of men your age, older than you, or above the age of 18, would be willing to have a great relationship with you, mm -hmm. among other things. <laughs> Hockwitz assistant principal Aaron Henton has pleaded not guilty to sex charges stemming from her arrest on Wednesday in Hemet. I'm joined now on the phone by Press Enterprise reporter Daryl Sanchi. Daryl, you were in the court during her arraignment uh, earlier this afternoon. What exactly happened? Well, the court appearance was a pretty routine matter. They the uh, the uh, suspect enters a plea. The judge uh, uh, determines bail, things like that, and then they set uh, further proceedings. This uh, session lasted about ten minutes. There were other defendants for other cases in there, and there were a few uh, apparent family members, or in some cases, there were people who had worked with this uh, woman before, who were present. Um, the defendant, uh, uh, Aaron Renee Hinton. Uh, did not really say much during the appearance. She answered yes to judges' questions, setting dates for uh, further procedures, and she spoke with her attorney quietly before the session began and pretty much leaned against the side wall of the courtroom sitting in the jury box uh, as the proceedings went on and had pretty much a glum expression on her face dr uh, during the session. She's currently uh, being held on $1 million bail. Uh, what can we expect how, how things will go now from here? Okay, well, the first thing that happens is her attorney said he just received evidence today, and so he hasn't really had time to pre prepare his case. We will be back in court on April the 15th for a hearing in which the judge will decide whether the bail should be reduced from $1 million to something less than that. Following that session on May the 23rd, they have what they call a settlement conference. That's, again, a routine procedure in, in cases, even misdemeanor cases, uh, in which the attorneys see if there's some kind of a, a agreement they can reach. Uh, it may be evidence-wise. It may be a plea. Um, uh, and then if they do not reach some kind of an agreement in that, and sometimes that 
occurs several times. Uh, they will schedule a preliminary hearing at which the judge would decide whether there's an evidence, evidence enough to go to trial. All right, Daryl, thanks for that update. That does it for our Friday edition of the PE Crime Blotter. Be sure to join us right here on PE.com for the latest on this story. Amy Neely uh, is a teacher from Florida who has recently been arrested on sex charges because she got caught having sex with a foreign exchange student. Now, her husband used a GPS app on her phone to track her down because he was suspicious that she was having some sort of relationship with this foreign exchange student. Apparently, he was living with the family while he was studying here. That's so wrong, man. 16 year old. Now, we have a local news report. Let's take a quick look at that. It gives more detail into the story, and then we'll discuss. Police say that the husband of this teacher had suspected that something was going on with his wife and that exchange student who lives with him. And police say his suspicions were confirmed. They say that he used his wife's app. It was a GPS in that phone to locate them here. And that's where they were having this act. <laughs> I love that, man. Amy Neely sits in the St. Lucie County Jail facing some serious charges. Port St. Lucie police arrested her this weekend for having sex with a minor. It began Saturday night in this parking lot at Centennial High School in Port St. Lucie. Police say Neely was with a 16-year-old exchange student who lives with her and her husband. So I want to go out to Nia Bender, news director at 17 KNUS. Nia, what happened? Well, basically, Courtney Bowles... Um, went to a park in northern Colorado, and she was in the park after hours. She went by and she picked up the vodka as well as some Sprite, and then she picked up the student. They went to the park where they began fooling around, basically, after hours. An officer noticed a car on the end of the park and decided to go check it out. And When the officer walked up to the car with her flashlight, that's when she noticed that both of the people in the car were nude and that the teacher was involved. The student basically lied about his age right off the bat and it kind of took place from there. Nia Bender, may I ask you if this had been a 31 year old man with a teen student, a 16 year old girl, would you still have referred to it as fooling around? Absolutely not. There is there is a double standard there. I do have to admit. I you know generally you think and this is probably the wrong thought, but you generally think when an older man sleeps with a teenage girl that there could be some kind of not mental damage, but but there's a whole lot more there that 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 can go wrong. And you have the tendency to think sometimes that that it isn't the same as a teenage boy and an older woman. That's not necessarily true. But Actually, you are right it's about not that. That, that it, it's not true. Period. And what you're saying typifies a complete miscarriage of justice where a woman is treated differently if she, she sexually molests a child than if a man does. You are looking at Courtney Bowles, a 31-year-old married mother of two. A 30-year-old female teacher in Houston at a humble high school in Texas, to be specific, uh, had sexual relations with a 17-year-old female student. Now, the age of consent in Texas is 18, so uh, the girl is underage. And as a result, uh, this teacher, Amanda Feenstra, is going to face criminal charges for her relationship with this 17-year-old. Also keep in mind that uh, after they had about a year-long relationship, uh, the girl decided, you know what, I want to end this, I want to move on, and uh, the teacher was not buying it. So she started stalking the 17-year-old, which is why she went to uh, her parents, to authorities, and uh, criminal charges were filed against the teacher. Now, a, a few more details about the story. It turns out that uh, Amanda Feenstra, the teacher, was married at the time and had the student living with her. And whenever uh, her husband was out of town, they would have sex. They would have sex on campus. They had sex all over the place. Time you got to enforce the law. She's 30 years old. There's obviously an imbalance of power there. Um, you did a lot of shady things when it comes to your husband and having the student live with you while your husband is there. I don't know. That was creepy. So um, I guess we'll see what happens. And also, whenever these kinds of cases come up with a you know even mildly attractive teacher um, having sexual relations with a student, I always think about 
what my ruling would be if the roles were reversed. And if it was a 30-year-old male teacher having relations with a 17-year-old female student, we would be singing a different tune. So you got to prosecute in the same way that you would prosecute a man. I hear you on that. Now, th that's why, I mean, it's such a weird thing because if if it's a 19-year-old, you're not going to prosecute a guy either and then throw in a mildly attractive lesbians and everybody's having a great time. If it's 15-year-old, I think clearly most people, for mo a great majority of people, clearly creepy and unacceptable no matter guy, girl, etc. At 17, you know, it depends on what you think the age of consent should be, you know, and so that's why it's slightly middle ground. But remember, this is actually a pretty good case of why she should be arrested. She abused her power. Yes. Uh, you know, position, and then by stalking her. Like, it's one thing, they have a consensual relationship, they break it off, you know, you could, some people could claim no harm done, others would claim no, it's illegal, etc. But there was harm done, and she turned into a weirdo, and... A stalker, And yes. a stalker, etc. And, and if there's stalkers who are both legal age, and hey, that's life, right? And then you, you know, might pursue her for stalking, that's a different thing. But when you have the power imbalance, and one's the teacher, the other one's the student, it makes it especially problematic. Stacey Hopkins is a former PE teacher from Arlington High School. She was also the assistant JV basketball coach. Tonight, Hopkins is back behind bars, accused of the statutory rape of three of her students. Former Arlington High School teacher Stacy Hopkins was arrested twice in May after her ex-boyfriend accused her of texting students nude photos of herself. Police investigators alleged Hopkins had illegal contact with her students that went beyond her cell phone. Thursday, a grand jury indicted the 28-year-old former teacher for allegedly having sex with three Arlington High School students, as well as soliciting the sexual exploitation of a minor by electronic means. No matter what, we just have to be sure again as a community as a society that we're doing all we can to protect our young people even when they may not think they need our protecting. After Hopkins first arrest in May a third student came forward saying his sexual relationship with Hopkins began earlier in the year claiming each encounter took place at Hopkins Cordova home. When Hopkins went to court in May she was on administrative leave from her job with the county school system. She has since been fired and is back behind bars facing, among other charges, three counts of statutory rape. All adults in the state of Tennessee are tasked with the responsibility of caring for and protecting our young people. Each of those statutory rape charges carries anywhere from three to 15 years behind bars with no opportunity for parole. Those sexual exploitation by text charges, one to six years if convicted. Worst case scenario for Stacey Hopkins, 57 years behind bars. Teacher who admitted having sex with two of her students. Now people are wondering if the punishment fits the crime. WREG's Adam Hammond looks at Stacey Hopkins' sentence and why some people have a problem with it. Stacey Hopkins has been ordered to have absolutely no contact with the two students she had sex with when she was a PE teacher here at Arlington High School. Not only can she not teach here anymore, but she cannot have any job where she supervises people under the age of 18. A judge gave Hopkins four years probation after she pled guilty to aggravated statutory rape, but she escaped jail time. Some people think the Senate shows a double standard in the courtroom. If this were a case where it was a male on a young female, or say that the children were younger, I think that it probably would have been much, much har more harsh. Some people think no matter if it's a man or a woman, they should get jail time for statutory rape. I do think there is a little bit of a stereotype in our society still, um, where the guys, uh, you know, guys will be guys. They may have been the pursuers. Mark Elkin says even if the boys were the aggressors, that doesn't make it okay. Well, I mean, there's definitely a double standard in the crime and the punishment. Because if that would have been a male teacher and it had been girls, he would have went to prison. And he should have gone to prison. The rapes happened last year and Hopkins is ordered to continue the drug and alcohol treatment she's been in since then. The TBI says Hopkins has 48 hours from yesterday's ruling to register as a sex offender. Another teacher-student scandal right out of Arizona. Of course we do. Right, we do, but this one is a little shaky. I don't know if uh, you're going to agree with this, okay? Uh, the teacher's 34 years old. The student is 17 years old. Okay, but now the most important part of it. Uh, what are the 
uh, genders. Okay, the female is 34 years old, a female well, teacher. So She's a biology teacher in Arizona. Do guys not do this anymore? I remember when guy teachers used to, you know, sleep with their female students, and that would cause an outrage. Mm -hmm. They apparently have stopped altogether, right? right? But the women are picking up where they left, left off. They're like, boom, 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 boom. I think the male teachers have learned throughout the years uh, to be more secretive. They, they know the tricks of the trade, whereas the women, maybe they're a little new to it. And so, they keep getting cold stone right. busted. Uh, the other possibility is that when the men do it, that it's not as large a story and that we don't hear about it, yeah, of course. True. And then when the women do it, uh, everybody's like, oh, there they go again. Right. Like us. Uh, now, 3417. Uh -huh. But here's what they did wrong, I think. Look, I don't think the age difference is a big problem. Oh, <laughs> no. That's what they did wrong. No, but in all oh, seriousness. Oh, she could have been so much better at 34. That got me excited. 34, 17. As a 17-year-old boy, you're thinking, yeah, yeah, they're not so bad. I mean, these aren't the sick ones with the 9 and the 11-year-olds. 17, you know, come on. But that teacher, uh, I'm not saying anything. I haven't said a word. A school band instructor in Sumner County is facing charges of statutory rape tonight. The allegations involve a high school student who was 16 years old at the time. Channel 4's Nancy Amons joins us with details. Well, the teacher, DeVry DePriest, is out on bond but not returning to the classroom anytime soon. She has been suspended without pay. Dear Father, this is Devry DePriest singing love songs she posted on YouTube. But apparently the mother of one high school boy wasn't too keen about one of DePriest's alleged relationships. DePriest is a band teacher at Rucker Stewart Middle School in Gallatin. She also helps with the Gallatin High School Band. According to the Gallatin Police Department, DePriest had a sexual relationship with a boy in the high school band last year. He is 17 at the time. He was 16 when the offense occurred. Gallatin police say the boy's mother brought him to the police station yesterday after learning of the affair. Police say they recorded a phone conversation between the boy and DePriest, during which he admitted their sexual relationship. She was 25 at the time. According to the police affidavit, the teacher and student had sex about 20 times here at her apartment complex in Gallatin last fall. The pre social media sites indicate she's a graduate of Vanderbilt University. She plays horns with the Nashville Wind Ensemble, is on the brass staff with the Music City Drum and Bugle Corps. P.S. I love you. Tonight, DePriest is free on $15,000 bond, charged with statutory rape by an authority figure. Her teaching career is in jeopardy if the allegations are proved to be true. Now, police say the sexual relationship between the two went on for two or three months during the fall of 2010. DePriest was a first-year teacher at the time, Tom. Nancy Amos tonight, thanks. Now, DePriest is due to appear in court on December 7th. Um, in Utah, a junior high student has sex with not one, but two of his teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason why the story is interesting is because the first teacher he had an affair with uh, was 46 years old. Really? And he had an ongoing affair with her. Okay. Um, after that affair ended, okay, the teacher didn't want anything to do with him anymore. He starts having sex with another teacher who's 36 years old. Let's go to the mugshot. Is that the 36 or the 46 year old? 36 year old. Okay, and the kid is 15, right? Yes. Now, I got no problems with having sex with 36 year olds, right? I, I, I've done that. 46 year olds, I, I think I, I was at least in that ballpark, right? And right. one day I'll be having sex with a 46 year old all the time, right? But when you're 15, bounds of reason, dude. I don't understand it. And it's funny because this teacher got caught because when she found out that the 15 year old boy was having, uh, had an affair with the other teacher, she went and confronted her. And the other teacher's like, look, I'm going to resign from my job, and I'm turning you in. Uh, they got into a cat fight over the 15-year-old. <laughs> I don't understand it. David, thank you so much. A Rankin County woman accused of having sex with her son's underage friend pleaded guilty just a few hours ago to statutory rape. Yeah, Cheryl Smith was sentenced to 20 years in prison on each count, but they will run concurrently. The judge also suspended 13 years. She'll likely serve seven years in prison. 16 WAPT's Joseph Pleasant was in the courtroom. When Smith was sentenced, he joins us now live. Joseph. 
Brad Smith made her plea agreement just minutes before a jury selection was supposed to begin in her trial. In fact, jurors were here in Rankin County prepared to be called in to be questioned. But after a competency hearing this morning where a judge found her competent to stand trial, the 39-year-old decided to skip the trial and plead guilty to all four counts against her. Smith had been in the state mental hospital for seven months after an apparent nervous breakdown. Prosecutors say back in 2008, Smith had sex with a 14-year-old friend of her son's at least four times in Rankin County. Three of the encounters allegedly took place at her home. Prosecutors say one time was in her son's bedroom. Prosecutors also say during this morning's competency hearing, it appeared Smith's mental problems were all an act. Uh, under oath, answering the pleas or the questions at the pleas, uh, you could tell that she had a, a much different mental state than she had this morning, uh, which indicated uh, to the state uh, that she was malingering, that, that, that she was uh, faking any sort of mental illness. Uh, because Smith pled guilty to a sexual offense, she will have to serve her sentence day for day, so that means no time off for good behavior. Now, this case is separate from a separate statutory rape charge Smith faces in Hines County. In that case, the district attorney says they were waiting on a competency report. Now that this one is complete, they are also preparing to move forward. Prosecutors in that case say there was actually an eyewitness to Smith and that teen boy engaged in sexual activity. Reporting live from Rankin County, Joseph Pleasant, 16 WAPT News. All right, thank you, Joseph. Now, we tried to contact Smith's attorney, John Coletti, for comment. But he did not return our call. Smith was a teacher at New Summit where the boy went to school. The prosecutors say the relationship started before she got the job, and he was not one of her students. But first on 6, here at 6, an Oklahoma teacher accused of having sex multiple times with a teenage student. Investigators say it happened earlier this year in McIntosh County at both the teacher's home and the student's home. Tara Vreeland just got back from Shakota with the new details. Tara? Terry and Scott, 38-year-old Michelle McCutcheon is charged with two counts of second-degree rape. The charges are so serious because McCutcheon is in a position of trust, a teacher. Yes, it's very surprising. This is the woman accused of having sex with a 16-year-old high school sophomore. 38-year-old Michelle McCutcheon, a fifth-grade teacher at Marshall Elementary School in Shakota. She's a veteran of the school system, and, and what I've heard across the board is that they just never saw that coming. Calls to the school district went unreturned, but we're told due to the investigation, McCutcheon was suspended with pay. The teen is a sophomore at Shakota High School. It's a teacher. Anytime it's a person that's in that position, it's a very unfortunate thing, and we never like to see that. Investigator Tanya French says the five alleged acts between McCutcheon and the teen happened between January and February at both of their homes. French says McCutcheon sent nude photos of herself to the teen's cell phone, but she wouldn't go into further detail. I'd really rather not with it still being under investigation. Well, and he's a minor. Too. McCutcheon is also charged with one count of sodomy. She was released from jail on a $5,000 bond, and her next court appearance is July 20th. Tara Vreeland, News on 6. Now at noon, breaking news out of Pasco County. We have just learned a 37-year-old woman is now sitting behind bars for allegedly having sex with a minor. Investigators say haven't said exactly how Alexis Colson met the victim, but we have been told that she arranged to meet that 16-year-old victim at least once for sex and sent him 15 pictures where she was either nude or in sexual poses. Colson is currently charged with unlawful sexual activity with a minor. Now to that former Cincinnati Bengals cheerleader and high school teacher charged with having a sexual relationship with an underage student. The trial was set to start this week, but today Sarah Jones is due in a Kentucky court to accept a reported plea deal. ABC's Paula Ferris joins us now with the very latest on this. Paula, good morning. Good morning to you, Amy. It's a complete 180 for this former Cincinnati Bengals cheerleader. Just a few months ago, Sarah Jones pleaded not guilty to having sex with a minor, but her attorneys tell ABC News that today she will accept a plea deal. ABC News has learned that Sarah Jones, the former pro football cheerleader and high school teacher accused of having sex with a student, will avoid a very public trial set to start later this week. Jones's attorney says later this morning she will accept a plea deal after originally pleading not guilty in April to first degree sexual abuse of a teenager. People don't know the real me. I just ask the general public to maybe hold their judgment a little bit longer until the truth does come out. 
Prosecutors say the 26-year-old used emails and text messages to seduce a 16-year-old student back in November 2011, a relationship police say led to a three-month-long affair with the teen. Up until now, Jones had denied wrongdoing, blaming the boy's ex-girlfriend for spreading lies. This has gotten very out of control, um, and it was started by high school girls. And at the end of the day, everyone will know the truth. Jones maintains the 16-year-old boy was a family friend. And in a surprising twist this spring, the teen's family showed up at court to support her. Yes, he was a student. He was not my student. Um, he was a family friend who I'm very close with his parents. Had it not been for their support, it'd be very difficult to get through this without them. ABC News has also learned Jones's mother, Cheryl, a former middle school principal in the same district, will also accept a plea deal this morning. I know why I had to go through this. Mentally, Sarah couldn't have done it by herself, and she needed my support. Cheryl Jones was charged with tampering with evidence in the case, something her daughter has maintained throughout was unfair. The hardest thing has been going through, um, not only me going through it, but then having my mom go through it with me. Because this is what has happened to her is not fair. So my, my goal is for her charges to be dismissed. Memory, 16 years old. There is this gorgeous, and I mean gorgeous, 24-year-old woman in our neighborhood. And I do not know why, but I can't help but staring at her all the time. One day, she invites me into her car. She asks me if I like to kiss boys, and I say, no, I do not like to do that. Then she says she wants to show me something. And she leans over and she kisses me so softly on the lips with her lips. And then she puts her tongue in my mouth. Wow. She asks me if I want to come over to her house. And then she kisses me again and tells me to relax, to feel it, to let our tongues feel it. She asked my mama if I can spend the night, and my mama's delighted that such a beautiful, successful woman has taken an interest in me. <laughs> I am scared, but really, I can't wait. Her apartment is fantastic. She's got it really hooked up. It's the 70s, the beads, the fluffy pillows, the mood lights. I decide right then I'm going to be a secretary just like her when I grow up. <laughs> She makes a vodka for herself, and then she asks me what I'm drinking. I say the same as she's drinking, and she says she doesn't think my mama would like me drinking vodka. I say she probably wouldn't like me kissing girls either. And the pretty lady makes me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> then she changes into this chocolate satin teddy. She is so beautiful. I mean, I always thought bull daggers were ugly. I say, you look great. She says, so do you. I say, no, I only have this white cotton brown panties on. So she takes me into her closet, and she changes me into another satin teddy. It is lavender, like the first soft days of spring. The alcohol has gone to my head, and I am loose. I am ready. I notice as she lays me down on her bed that there is a picture of a naked black woman with a huge afro. As she slowly and gently lays me down on her bed and just our bodies rubbing, just our bodies rubbing makes me come. Then she does everything to me and my coochie snorcher that I always thought was nasty before. And oh my God, I am so excited. She says, your vagina untouched by man smells so fresh, so nice. I wish I could keep it that way forever. I get crazy. I get crazy wild. And then the phone rings and it's my mama. She catches me at everything. I try to act normal when I get on the phone. What is wrong with you, girl? 
Have you been running? I say, no, Mama, exercising. Afterwards, the gorgeous lady teaches me everything about my coochie snorcher. She makes me play with myself in front of her, and she teaches me all the different ways to give myself pleasure. She is very thorough. In the morning, I am worried I become a butch because I'm so in love with her. <laughs> she laughs, but uh, I never see her again. You know, I realized later she was my surprising, unexpected, politically incorrect salvation. She transformed my sorry ass coochie snorcher and raised it up into a kind of heaven.